With Wolves' win at the weekend over Aston Villa and other results going our way, we are mathematically safe again in the Premier League for another season. And to be honest, at the start of the season, looking at kind of the recruitment we brought in, I wouldn't really have expected, us, expected me to have said that with, with three games to go left of the season. But I tell you what, looking back at where we were before the World Cup and under Large and Steve Davis, you, you would have bit your hand off for that. Three games to go, safe. You know, with with some difficult games coming up with, with Man United, with Arsenal, with Everton still fighting for their lives as well. Just are three really tough games to say we are now mathematically safe. It's, it's it's really nice and kind of the massive weight off your shoulders. Of course, there was times where I was worried about us getting relegated, but did I, did I actually think we would? I don't, I, don't, I don't think so. Even when we was rock bottom of the league, 20th before the World Cup, I didn't... I, I still felt like, you know, we wasn't even halfway through the season yet then. There's so many, you know, there's so many games to play, so many points to play for. I was never really worried... We never really crossed my mind we would because I feel like the, the quality and of course, you know, I know football isn't one on paper, but, but the, the squad we had was, you know, he's easily top 10, I believe, in, in the Premier League at the moment. I don't know what I'm going to call this video really, but I kind of just wanted to make it as an appreciation to Lopetegui and kind of what he's done in the, in the four or five months he's been at the club so far. And I think here's a stat that kind of shows kind of what he's done at the club. Again, I think a lot of Wolves fans would have heard this stat already. But just before the World Cup, before the break, we played Arsenal, ended up losing 2-0 in that game. And at that point, we were, like I said, rock bottom, 20th in the league, with just 10 points. I think at that time, 15 games were played. Now, recently, just after that Villa win, another three points. We are now 13th in the league with 40 points. So, it kind of just shows that, you know, he's got... He's got 30 points in, in what the, the, like I said, the four or five months he's been here already. That's, you know, 30 points. That's more than Southampton have got at the moment, which kind of, is, when you put it like that, it's just, just incredible what he's done. Of course, there's been times where I don't think he's, he's perfect. And of course, he definitely hasn't got the team he wants because I feel like now that we're safe, I feel like we'll see a lot more links with players. Now we know we can attract the players to the Premier League and, and we're a Premier League club now officially. I think we're, like I said, we'll be able to attract a lot more, a lot higher calibre players. And I'm sure at some point I'll do a transfer video because there's a lot of transfers flying around at the moment as well. If you want to see one of them, then let me know, as always, in the comments if you want to see anything like that. And one of the big things I've noticed as well, where kind of Lopetegui has just kind of made, I don't know, he's brought that love back to Wolves again, very much like, like Nuno did, where he's very passionate, you can see. You know, he wants to get involved with the fans, he's always going... He's always affectionate with his players, going around hugging them, and you could see Large was, I don't know, was just very isolated. Didn't wasn't really about that. Was just very conservative and just kept himself to himself. Where I think I don't know, he just felt he just felt very distant between the the players, and I felt that first half of the season, you just you know you didn't recognise them at all. You didn't really associate yourself with them. But with this team, you, if you really associate yourself, you can really connect with the team. I think. A big thing as well I've noticed in the last month, few months or so, is you know he's made Molyneux a fortress again. Mentioned it quite um, quite publicly about the atmosphere. He wants the atmosphere better. He you know he wants to improve match day experiences, and I feel like he has. I feel like the little things with the flags and and getting there a few minutes earlier and performances and stuff like that. I feel like it's really made a difference, and you can see in our last four home games, you know one one all four of them all been clean sheets, and I feel like. We it's starting to become a fortress again, which, which, like I said, going back to the start of the season on the large, you'd, you'd come here and, and you'd get a few easy three points for you. But, I mean, of course, there has been the anomalies in there, like, like the Leeds game, the Bournemouth game at home, where, where we have lost those games. And, you know, the, of course, there's the anomaly in there, and, and it hasn't been perfect. It's still been quite inconsistent throughout. But, like I said, more recently, I think it's been so good and, and it's not like we were playing easy games or easy teams in those runnings, you know. Of course, we had Chelsea in there who were, you know, on such bad run of form and their like, confidence was, was rock bottom. And we had Tottenham, again, who were very inconsistent and who, 
who were on the decline as well. But we also played teams like Palace, who I think before that had Roy Hodgson come in and won the first three, four games under him. Which, like most recently against Villa. Apart from that game against United, you know, I think they had on form there was third in the league, fourth in the league or something. So it's not like we was playing Southampton or or Everton or you know teams teams down the bottom. We was playing so we was playing some really really good teams and teams on really good form. Of course, yeah, we wasn't playing free flowing, beautiful, you know, tiki taka football. It was it was very stop and start, quite scrappy, very you know intense. You know, you're always on the edge of the seat because it's Wolves. Anything could happen. Saul could throw one in. You know, people could do whatever and. It was all, never perfect, it never has been perfect yet, but it's, it's starting to click a little bit and, you know, you can see Lopate has kind of found a settled a settled team, which I think has helped a lot because I think under Large as well and at the start of Lopetegui's era as well, a lot of rotating and that doesn't help anyone. When you've got a structured kind of starting eleven, a structured a structured system, I think that helps with the players as well so they know, kind of know who they're playing alongside there. They know their strengths, weaknesses, and I feel like that's helped a lot, having having a settled squad. I mean, when you've got people like, like Huang, when you've got Pedence, Matinho, Nathan Collins, when you've got people like that on our bench as well, you know, we, the, the depth we've got at the moment it is really good. And, of course, it's going to be difficult to keep everyone happy and, and stuff like that, but I think it's it's a real, real good headache for, for Lopetegui to have, and I feel like with players coming back from injury, like Neto, like Huang did as well, coming back from injuries... Uh, Neves from a suspension as well for like that's helped a lot. Wolves have kept ten clean sheets at home this season, which is more than any other club in the league. You know, more than City, more than Arsenal, more than United, Liverpool, whoever. Which I thought was an incredible stat, really. Also, I, don't, I think majority of been them have been under Lopetegui, but of course I remember uh, Steve Davis got the the one 0 win against Forest at home. So it wasn't all Lopetegui, but I kind of I think that just shows kind of what he's made Molyneux again, like a fortress, like he was under Nuno. And there's high pressing. There's I mean you saw in the game against Villa, you saw Neto Costa just at 36 just presses everything, and we know he's only going to get to 60 minutes and he's going to be blowing out his arse and he's going to get subbed off for Huang or whatever. But in those 60 minutes, 65 minutes, he just he just gives his all, and we saw that with Neto as well. We saw that with I mean Neves does it. Neves have done it for years now. I mentioned this in the last video, which I made about Lopetegui as well, but some of the summer signings, um, the the winter signings, I, sh I should say, in January. I, th I mean, Craig Dawson, Mario Lamina have just been have just been so good. They've been so good. And I think if... I mean, I'm going to make a video about Player of the Season and Wolves Awards. I'm going to make a video about that. So I don't want to spoil it too much, but I think... They've got to be in the competition for for player of the season. I think Craig Dawson, Lamina especially, just they've been so good since they've been in, and they've kind of completely just changed our system and 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 the way we play so much. Like Craig Dawson, especially having a leader at the back and leader at the back, a communicator, someone who's experienced, who's been in the league for God, it's probably been ten years now. He's been in the Premier League, and, and again Lamina, who's someone who's very experienced as well, who's, who's played in the Premier League, who's coming into his peak years as well. I think they've just been they've been so good, and we've got them for you know for real good fees as well. I think Dawson, I don't I can't remember the exact amounts, but I think it was a couple of million, four million, I believe, and Amari Lamina I think was around nine, ten million euros from Nice, which I think still is just such good business, and they've been. They've they've changed our season. I, I genuinely think they've they've completely changed our season. Like we've we've seen before when when Lamine has not been in the team recently, we've we've looked a shadow of ourselves. I feel like with that Dawson in in the team as well in the back line, I feel like we'd see us struggle a lot. Like a right kill, a uh, right Collins. I think he's a real good a real good defender, and I feel like he has bright future. But I think just communication wise and the experience of, of the league, I feel like. It's just, it's just so good and it's just, just undroppable. I think both of them at the moment, they've been so good. And Fulox plays like like Joao Gomez as well. For, for like every time he's played, he's, been, he's put in a good shift. He hasn't put a foot wrong. Pablo Sarabia as well. I think I've been a big fan of him. I know he's probably got a lot of stick from Wolves fans, which I don't, I don't really understand why. Like I feel like he's just such... just I don't know, he's just so Spanish, is the way to put it. He's just so composed on the board, just, just knows the right pass to make. He's just... 
very calm. So I feel like some of our forwards can be very rash and just 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 overthink two times when we're on the ball or, or, or have to get shot away. Where Sarabi is just so kind of composed and just you know takes his time and just real real good control of the ball and just I feel like he's someone perfect as well that we've needed. But yeah, that is the end of today's video. As always, let me know your thoughts on the video. Let me know your thoughts on Lopetegui if you're a Wolves fan. I mean, outside of Wolves fans, let me know what, what you think of, of, of Wolves and Lopetegui looking in ever since it's come in. It, it'll be interesting to hear. But thank you all for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe as always to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.